Welcome back to Flint Creek Transport. My name is Justin. So as you've seen in the last video, I was in Idaho, uh, Bonners Ferry, Idaho. And I, you know, I got to thinking, I, it, this never really crossed my mind before, but those trucks up there in Idaho or in the Western states, most of them had four axles on the trailer and then four axles on the truck, basically two lift axles, a lift axle on the trailer and a lift axle on the truck. They were illegal, 105,000 pounds. Check out this rig right here. This rig can haul 102,000 pounds legally. And look at the axles on here. This is a five axle rig compared to an eight axle rig. Is that crazy or what? How do they come up with that? You'd think a five axle rig couldn't haul 102,000 pounds. And I'll tell you how we get to that. 102,000 pounds. So what it is, is a, is a new, it's called a New York State Divisible Load Permit and it also works in Ontario, Canada. In Ontario, Canada, I don't think this will quite haul 102,000 pounds, although on our cab card, our Ontario cab card, it does say 102,000, well actually it gives it in kilograms or yeah, kg something. So it's stamped or it's on the cab card that we can haul 102 in Canada, but I don't think the Canadian laws let you haul 102 on a five axle rig it's got to be like a tri-axle again this rig 102,000 pounds is what we're legal and the way it's set up we have 50,000 pounds rated on the trailer 40,000 pounds on the drives and 12,000 pounds on the front axle so you take 50 plus 40 is 90 plus 12 is 102 and most of you guys know your your front weight on the front axle doesn't change a lot usually you're right in that 10 to 12,000 pounds. Anyway, it kind of depends on uh, where you put that fifth wheel. But with these spread axle rigs, 102,000 pounds is pretty crazy. Obviously, we can't just do this with any rig, but a 40,000 pound suspension is all you need. These tires and axles in, for the trailer obviously have to be rated for 25,000 pounds. So that's why another reason I like to order a lot of our equipment to get the heavy axles, to get the 25K axle. It's actually a 30,000 pound axle, uh, but it's only rated for 25,000 because of the brakes. So these axles, 25,000 per axle, we also have to have 16 ply tires to be able to get the weight. So everything is rated for 102,000 pounds or it's rated to haul the weight. So same way with the tires on the truck. Uh, we do need 16 ply tires on the truck. Actually, you know what? I think there's some 14 ply tires that we can get by with, but for the most part, we just run 16 ply. You know, that's why we gotta be real careful with capping tires. We do cap tires here. It gets hot here in the summertime. So hauling heavy in the heat and 102,000 pounds, you think on this rig, it seems kind of crazy when in, in Canada or in Idaho, they're running 105,000 pounds, only a few thousand pounds more, and they have eight axles. It just seems crazy. You know, you'd think, you start adding, you know, three extra axles and then plus everything's got to be built heavier under there to handle those axles. So the extra weight of the trailer, uh, usually there are 53 foot trailers up there. It seems like a lot just for a few extra thousand pounds. I don't know what they would get by. Every state, every obviously country or whatever is different with their combinations. And it could be that maybe our roads are built different. Maybe it's something to do with the freeze thaw cycle. I'm not sure but it's pretty amazing. It just hit me the other day. I'm like, you know what? We have a five axle rig. We can haul 102,000 pounds and they have eight axle rigs and they can haul 105. I think actually it's 105.5. This is about the best combo you can get for 102,000 pounds. Uh, there's some trailers. I'll just uh, show you this peerless trailer right here does not have the heavy axles. So this one we're probably rated for about 95 to 98,000 pounds. So our payload, it, you know, usually these trucks run in right around 36,000 pounds empty. So it gives you, you know, a nice little payload, uh, well over 30 ton. So you take 36,000 minus 102,000. Gives you a little idea what we can haul, what we can net out. So yeah, if these trucks were about 36,500 empty, which is right around what they are. And then legal 102 gives us about 32 and a half ton that we can haul legally. That's a nice payload. This trailer is definitely, you know, it's gonna be cut. This is a closed tandem. 
and uh, the axles are not rated, so therefore we're not going to be able to haul the weight. That's what we get to live with here in upstate New York. When we go into Pennsylvania, there are some ag permits available, some also some uh, wood chip permits available, so we can haul, I think, right around 95,000 pounds in Pennsylvania. Uh, the cool thing with Pennsylvania is all you need is the permit for the truck. The trailer doesn't matter. It can it goes with any trailer. So you just need a permit for the truck and then you're good up to 95,000. You can pull any trailer. I wish New York would do that, but unfortunately we have to marry, you know, the truck and the trailer. So it's got to both have it. They both got to be rated and on and on. I just go real quick here and, and tell you guys what we can haul. So when you see a four axle trailer in upstate New York or in New York, here are kind of what the combinations are, what you can haul. So if this were a triaxle rig, which we do have one triaxle rig, we can haul 107,000 pounds with our triaxle trailer. Same way with a three axle truck and a triaxle trailer. Uh, six axles would get us 107,000 pounds. If we wanted to bump up higher, we could haul 117,000 pounds, but then we need a quad axle trailer. So a four axle trailer, or they get they will also do a three axle trailer and then put a steerable lift on the tractor. So then we can haul up to 117,000 pounds, which is pretty insane for a rig. And again, that is a seven axle rig, 117,000 pounds. We're still legal a lot more weight than 105 say in idaho where they have an eight axle rig only 105,000 pounds and it could be maybe that there's a combination of states out there that work together and they're good for you know a couple states but i just thought it was interesting and i'd share it with you guys i'll show you real quick this trailer is getting scrapped this is an all aluminum trailer i don't even know the year of this i think it's like a 2003 or four is what rings a bell this trailer is a Mac. What happened with this trailer is a lot of the frame where the steel and the aluminum go together, there's a lot of corrosion in there. It's just not worth fixing up. So this trailer is going to get cut up. I don't know if I can show you if you can see on this side, but yeah, right here. So right in here, you can see where the steel and the aluminum, whenever you have that, there is corrosion and it's just starting to push out. So therefore we could not continue on with this trailer. It's been actually setting for quite a while. I was trying to baiting, do I want to fix it up or not? You know what, it's just not worth it. So we're gonna, we're gonna cut it up. And I didn't pay a lot for the trailer when I did buy it and we got some good use out of it. So now it's time to go down the road. The cool thing with this trailer is, is that it's all aluminum. So we can at least get a few bucks for it. What we call pizza money. <laughs> Our new trailers are Titan trailers. I'll show you real quick how these are built underneath and what they do to prevent the corrosion from happening. So if you look, this subframe under here is all aluminum. And what they do is they put this, so this hanger here, this these are steel. They put a plastic I don't know what it is, some type of a plastic piece. And then it almost looks like a silicone or something that goes in between the steel and the aluminum. And that is to help it from corrosion. But obviously you still get some corrosion. It still happens. Uh, that's, the, that's the bad thing with putting steel and, and aluminum close together. And I don't even know if you can see it. You can see, I don't know if it's starting to push up a little bit, but you get, you definitely still get some corrosion. It's just not near as bad. This is actually, I think, one of our first Titan trailers. I think this is a 2012. 2012 or 2013, one or the other. Always busy, 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 right? Starting to get dark out. But I'm gonna grab the loader and we got a couple of these blocks here that need to get set in place. These trucks are gonna get pulled front. I wanna make a nice line across the back here. So that way the trucks have something to go back up against. Well, not go back up against, but basically keep them from rolling in the ditch because right now they could go back a little too far and we've had some trucks some guys that are a bit daring look at those tracks and there's the edge and you don't want to end up in there i'm going to grab the loader and we're going to move these big blocks i think they're six foot blocks come on there we go let's go
Got us a convoy. Jack. These guys are lining up for fuel. I tell you, they got this whole, uh, I was just reading in the news again today about uh, some refineries in Ohio shutting down. I don't know, it's uh, all this stuff is scary stuff. We fuel a lot here at the shop, but our guys do fuel on the road as well. But I'm just dreading or like I'm almost, yeah, I just, I know I probably at some point I'm going to get the phone call of, hey, Justin, you're not going to be able to get a load of fuel. Uh, you're going to have to wait a couple days. And then I'm not sure what to do. Think I should check the oil to pull up front 10 feet? <laughs> check how many uh, codes are up. Looks like we got a little, a little air pressure problem, so I gotta wait till this one builds up. So you're saying if you're really good, you don't have to get out of the loader to hook the chain up? Is that what you're saying? Yep. <laughs> we'll see how this is gonna work. Well, Justin, how good of an operator are you? Let's see if we can make this happen. Was that impressive or what? All right. Not too bad. I think I'm a pro at this. The problem is, this is not how I want this block. I don't want it like this, I want it straight. That's the problem. So, he's running the loader now. Might be better if I straighten the blocks out. The problem is, look, so if I'm in there by myself, it's hard for me to get them straight. That's enough for one night. I got a few blocks in there, you can see. So that's gonna be a little trial. We're gonna see how these work and I'm gonna go home. Enough for one day, short day. So worst case scenario, we can always come back and tweak these blocks a little bit. I do wanna at some point put in a electric line behind so that way we can plug trucks in. I'll uh, show you real quick here. I actually have electric that we put here for this uh, exact reason. You can see the, uh, right there. So electric's out here, it's all set to go. It's just a matter of pulling the trigger on it. And this new lot is much better, much nicer than the old one. Get all the trucks parked up in a row. That was something that was needing to get done. I wanted to just do it myself because I wanted to kind of see how it would look. Now we're gonna test it out, see if those blocks hold a truck. Hopefully the guys aren't hitting them. We're gonna probably get some high-vis paint, throw some high-vis paint on there. That way we don't have any issues of guys hitting them. I'm hoping they don't hit them. Good morning, beautiful day here. A little cloudy, but in five minutes, it can change. This is New York. Look at this rig. This is the rig I'm gonna be riding in today. Do you hear that? Riding. I am the trainer today. 
So there's one of our yard guys that is working on getting his license. He has, a, he's got his class B permit and there is a load that came in to go to Canandaigua, maybe about 15, 20 minutes away. I'm gonna ride with him. I'm going in the passenger seat to see how nervous we can make this guy. You ready for this? I think so. Do you mind being on YouTube? Sure. <laughs> Sorry about the crazy vibration noise. There we go. Uh, I wanna show you guys real quick what this is. This is actually for the heated bed, okay? This goes right up into the bed, into the box, and we'll heat the box so stuff doesn't freeze in the winter time. So here is just the handle. I'm not sure which is what, we don't really use this. Basically just hangs out here. A lot of times they will just, it doesn't really matter if it goes through the box or up the side, whatever. Not a big deal. But a lot of times they just get eliminated anyway. Because we don't do a lot of hauling in the winter time. In the winter time, it's very minimal for us. And I never like when they let the tailgates bang. So I think it, it cracks the tailgates, cracks stuff up in the back. It's one thing if it slams a little bit, but when it slams hard, not good for it. My part is over. I still remember my uh, first days driving and thankfully I actually had a lot of practice before I actually got my permit and I worked for a farm and I ran dump truck, I ran tractor trailer well before I was of age. It was just, you know, running out of fields, hauling silage, hauling haylage. It was perfect and I got a lot of experience from it. So when it came to get my license uh, at 18, at 21, I was able to do it. it. It wasn't a big deal. The nice thing with cleaning up all that scrap out in the back. Got me a wad of cash. Scrap's not paying too bad right now. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We'll see you in the next one. Peace out.